Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to another Enfeed podcast with your host Shabir Hassan. And I'm super excited uh, today because I have a very dear brother and friend of mine, someone who I, I really look up to. Uh, and uh, I'm very excited for him to join us on the show today. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a while, we've been meaning to get him on, but mashallah is a very, very busy person with a hectic schedule. Uh, so we have with us today uh, our brother Tufail Hussein. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam. How are you, bro? You okay? Sheikh Shabir, how are you? Alhamdulillah, very well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I'm good to finally be here. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Brother Tufail is, or well, just very recently became and was appointed the director uh, of Islamic Relief, um, which is a charity that I'm sure all of you have have heard of, mashallah, tawakkal, done amazing work. Uh, but having, I mean, hearing that, I remember seeing it, uh, you know, when you, when it was first posted that you become, mashallah, the director, which is, for a lot of people, to be honest, I think m- many people don't know really what that means. Uh, what, what does it mean being a director of such a huge charity? Um, but it is a it is a, a you know a, a position, mashallah, that Allah has has given you. What has that been like? Because you know your journey has been quite you know you've been in this in this sector for a long time, going back to two thousand five, coming up to what about fifteen years we would yes. say almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and we'll talk about it like where you started from and then now, alhamdulillah, where you are. Let's just talk about what's your experience been like uh, being the director of of Islamic Relief. Well, I, I was a, I've been a deputy director for about three years. Okay, uh, I've been in the role for about three years. And I was yeah. deputy director, and um, for me, it's 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 just an opportunity to do good. Mm. I've never really been a person that's sought after titles. Mm. I made that mistake once in my life, actually. Okay, right, where I, where I, where I desperately wanted a title and. I, I went after it and I, I learned a lesson in that in that in that situation mm. to never do that again because um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that taught me a very valuable lesson uh, so for me it was ne- it's never been about titles it's always been about just working your hardest and 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 doing as much good as possible mm. impacting as many lives as possible and hopefully inshallah for myself gaining as many good deeds as possible so that yeah. I can gain salvation in the life hereafter and also my family can gain some blessings through it too inshallah because inshallah. without their support I could never do this role so they obviously get a lot of blessings through my efforts but for mm. me it's all about I've always just wanted to help people in need that's it yeah. uh, and and as we go through my, my story you'll, you'll see one of the one of the motivating factors for that yeah. Um, uh, you know, growing up as an orphan child, yeah. and that's something that's always you know being. It's something that's been very at mm. the heart of my, um, at the heart of my being, uh, and in everything I, in everything I've done in my life, I, I've always, I've always kind of had a thought towards helping orphan children yeah. about you know about what I could do to support them, uh, and so it's it's inspired me into into a life within the charity sector. Inshallah. And I'm just I'm I'm living the dream. I literally am living the dream. Wallahi, yeah. I, and I and I love it. Alhamdulillah. I mean, I mean it comes with its challenges, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, going back. I mean, obviously, we're going to come to the begin, very beginning of your story. But going back, let's just say within uh, your experience within the charity sector, about 15 years or so ago, uh, where did you where did you start off, and how did that kind of passion for charity develop, and what what do you think got you to to the position that you're in now? Well, um. I, I was, I was, I was a young. What would you call it? A, 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 a delinquent, a, a young person that was was very naughty. Yeah. Uh, and my life was going nowhere. And um, I know you're going to go in, delve into mm. a bit more depth later on, but I came onto the dean, and dean really helped me. Yeah. It changed my life, <clears throat> and it turned everything around for me. And alhamdulillah, I was able to get my degree. I was able to 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 go into to get into some professional work. And I was living a very good life, alhamdulillah. You know, I was mm. I had my own house in Swindon. Uh, I was home by quarter past five in the evening. I had no <laughs> debts, uh, and uh, it was it was a peaceful life. But I didn't, I there wasn't, I didn't feel like I was doing anything that was having that that, that was meaningful. Yeah. Uh, and so I was looking for that purpose, for that why, and mm. I, I. F- I found it, it, what happened was that I, just before 2000, 2005, it was a couple of years before I think, there was the Gujarat riots. Mm. And when I saw that, that, that touched a nerve. When I, when I read the stories about how um, uh, you know, Muslim brothers and sisters mm. inside Gujarat were being persecuted, that, it angered me at that time and I, and I couldn't do anything about it. The only thing mm. I could do was send a donation. And I felt like I wanted to do more to support them, to help them. 
I didn't know what to do. I was like, in, I was in that moment in my life where, yeah. what you know, it's like it's that fork in the journey. You know, yeah. that 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 sort of pivotal moment where you you make a key decision which sets you up for the rest of the mm. life. And 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 what happened was that I, I it was a year before uh, I was in Pakistan and my uncle asked me to fundraise for a mosque. Yeah. Um, and and when he asked me to do that, I, I'd only just recently come onto the dean and people were still skeptical about me in in my hometown yeah. because I had a very bad reputation I was, I was you know seen as a very naughty boy and when he asked me to do that fundraising I was like ah, I don't know uncle because you know I'm not sure that people are going to give me any money when I get back because yeah. they're going to think that you know that I just had all these negative thoughts that went to my mind um, but I took on the challenge I came back and subhanAllah to my surprise I raised the money very very quickly mm. and raised a lot more than, than, than was actually what was originally asked yeah which we put towards uh, other other projects within the mosque, and I got a buzz off it, mm. uh, and and so it was sort of those two moments came together, and I thought, okay, maybe maybe, and then also I had I had a degree in marketing, so there was there was some sort of you know transferable skills there, and I thought maybe a career within the charity sector, specifically within fundraising, is something mm. that uh, that maybe is is what I want to do, and then thought about it, and then I thought this is it, this is what I really want to do. Yeah. And and then I just I I, I went onto every charity's website <laughs> and and applied for for roles up you know left right and centre didn't get one response by the way over yeah. for over a year so uh, you know a lot of charities <laughs> out there you know you need to sort out your HR <laughs> HR processes uh, back in 2005 I'm sure they've improved since then yeah. uh, and and so I didn't get any response and then what happened was that um, I, I went for Hajj. And in my in my in my du'afs, because I was told to make a lot of du'a and du'af in yeah. English, and in my du'afs, one of the main du'as I was asking for, my my main goal was to get into either Muslim Aid or Islamic Relief, right? Because they were the two biggest organisations at the time, mm. and and I was just thinking, Allah, please get me into Muslim Aid or Islamic Relief, Muslim Aid or Islamic Relief, and uh, and I came back, I, I I got an interview at Muslim Aid, and it was just funny the interview press because I went in and I sat there, and out of the interview room came. Who was at that time probably the most famous um, personality within the Muslim community, um, Yusuf Chambers, mm. and he yeah. he went and when he came out of the interview room with the guy that was interviewing him, hand in hand, laughing, joking, I thought, yeah. well, what what chance do I stand against someone like him? <laughs> yeah. He's already he pretty pretty much looks like he's already got the job. Yeah. Uh, so I went in and I, I I just that actually took the pressure off, and mm. I went in, I'd laugh, uh, and then the. A few weeks later, I, I kept calling Muslim because they never responded. Yeah. And I was calling this guy who now works at the Islamic Relief, I wouldn't say his name, he's a lovely <laughs> man. Uh, and uh, it, it didn't get a response. And then finally, I think, what, three weeks after, they called me. And I remember I was in, I was in the car park of my where, where I was working at the time at the Learning Skills Council. And I got the, the message say that I didn't get the job. My, it was probably one of the most disappointing moments of my life mm. at that time. Like as someone had ripped my heart because I was so passionately yeah. after a career within within the sector, uh, you know, immediately you start feeling sorry for yourself and you start getting all these negative thoughts. But mm. then I thought, you know, alhamdulillah, no problem. It's a test. I learn from this and I move on. And then I, I carried on applying. In that time, I got a job somewhere else actually, in Bristol. And um, when I got that job, a yeah. week into that job, Muslim Aid called me. Oh wow! And and they said. Um, we've got something that you might be interested in. Mm. So they obviously saw something in me yeah. and they called me in for an interview uh, and I went for an interview and then Alhamdulillah, I got a, got a job as a fundraising officer. Wow. My first job in the charity sector in 2005, earning a salary of £16,000 a year, living in London, <laughs> taking care of my family in Swindon. Yeah. But you know what? It was, it was Barakah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And, and, and that started my career in the sector uh, and, uh, and it's been just an amazing journey ever since. I've learned off so many people throughout, throughout my time in the sector, yeah. met some wonderful individuals, inspiring individuals. Uh, and, um, and here I am today. I, I've, I've just, that, that passion is still with me. Mm. You know, the passion to, to, to work alongside people that have that empathy for people that, you know, for, for people that are in need, for people yeah. that are, uh, one of the things I've, I've, I've always, I've always found it difficult to see people in pain. Mm. I kind of, I always feel that pain. Uh, and, and, and still to today, you know, when I, when I read stories or when I, when I, when I see these videos, which I try not to look at anymore, mm. um, I, I, I feel that pain and, and it just, it just inspires me to, to do, to do my work. It inspires me to yeah. work, you know, if I need to 24 seven mm. to help people that are suffering across the world. It's important that 
you know, you faced that rejection initially in yeah. the charity and you didn't kind of give up. You still you still thought, you know, Qadrullah, yeah. let me just continue. And alhamdulillah, then you, you finally found that kind of the door opened up for you. You got into it. And then, uh, mashallah, that your, your life was really set from that moment on. So I feel like that's really important. But, you know, when you were when you went for Hajj and you, when you were making dua that, oh, Allah, like, give me this opportunity in the, within the sector in these two, two charities. What was actually, did you have a, a plan in mind or did you have a specific role in mind or was it just... I want to be in the charity fundraising. Yeah, so fun, it was fun, actually fundraising, fundraising was 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 yeah. the role that because I felt like um, I had that, obviously that experience mm. when I when I went round and, and I and I raised money for that mosque. Yeah. And 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 also of course I had transferable skills from working in the marketing sector. Mm. I was a marketing campaign manager at the time, so I had those skills and I felt that I could I could mm. I could you know these were these were skills that would allow me to transfer into the sector. Yeah. Um, seamlessly and, and alhamdulillah it did because it's, it it helped me to manage campaigns and and yeah. and to and to and to put together fundraising campaigns, um, yeah. which, which you know, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, I've been I've been doing that for what fourteen years. Mashallah. And uh, again, I think that's another big, powerful lesson for many youngsters today, which is how you've kind of stuck at one thing, uh, and 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 you've and you've put everything you have into it because obviously fourteen years to get from you know fundraising officer and are now director of one of the biggest charities. Um, it just shows that you should stick at what you're doing because yeah. many people nowadays, you know, they ex- expect you know short-term results. Oh, yeah. you know, I've I've done it for a couple of years and I haven't achieved much. I'm not seeing the fruits of what I'm doing. Yeah. So do you feel like that's really important to like just yeah. you know if you're passionate about something, just just stick to it and and Allah will open up doors. Yes, and I think you've also got to be willing to willing to make sacrifices. Mm. So I I took I took a huge pay cut. Yeah. From my role in Swindon. <clears throat> You know, Alhamdulillah, I was living a very good life. There. I had my own house yeah. on uh, Amanda Finance through, through the HSBC Amanda Finance mortgage. Mm. Um, uh, I, I was living a very comfortable life by the grace of Allah. Uh, but I took a, I took a pay cut. To, you know, I, I was earning six. Yeah. My first salary was sixteen thousand pounds a year, and it, it did in my mind. I was worried about like you know, could I could I take care of this and that? But I, I've I had to on Allah, and I thought, you know what. Barakah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Um, you know, um, I, I did obviously, I did, I made the effort. I, I looked at the, the sums and, and yeah. I feel that I could, I could just about sort of manage. Yeah. Which I did. And I did in more than just manage, you know, alhamdulillah. Uh, and, and I've, by the grace of Allah, Allah has always been, I've always been blessed. And, it's, mm. you know, I've never sort of been, I've never been, uh, I've never, you know, been wanting for food or anything like that. Yeah. And yeah. my family, I neither have, as, I have neither as well. So um, I, I made that sacrifice. I made the sacrifice of, of up, uprooting from Swindon, mm. coming to London with a family. Uh, yeah. my, you know, my, my wife and my, my two daughters who uh, are both disabled, you know, both severely partially sighted. And mm. uh, so it was, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a risk um, to a certain extent, mm. but this what I said earlier. My family, my family's backing was vital. I mean, I had my wife's blessing. Yeah, she she's always supported me by the grace of Allah, and I couldn't do this without her. She it was because of her sort of give me that sort of that that confidence that we could do this together. Yeah, yeah. That that I was able to take that risk mm. and 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 make that sacrifice. I mean, it's not That's people make bigger sacrifices. Yeah, than yeah. That. But but you know, like with every. With every success story, let's just say, there's always going to be sacrifices and there's always going to be yeah. hardships and there's always going to be experiences in that person's life that would have shaped them to become yeah. what they are. And obviously, with yourself, you know, people can maybe look at, you know, the the articles that, oh, mashallah to fail has become director of, of Islam Relief. But actually for them uh, that, that don't know you on that personal level, where they take a step back and think, okay, subhanAllah, what kind of difficulties and hardships and tests would Allah, Allah would have put through uh, and and put to, to this person for him or her to to get to this position? And your your story, Subhanallah, is it's there's I don't even know where to start, Subhanallah. I mean, you mentioned actually towards the beginning that uh, you were an orphan child yourself. Um, tell us a bit about that and and what was your experience like growing up. Um. I've never publicly spoken about this. So mm. it, I, I do find it slightly challenging, but I, I think it's important to yeah. for, for the objectives or for yeah. our objectives today, which is to hopefully you know give a positive message to people course, that despite yeah. challenges, and my challenges are nothing compared to what some people are going out there, mm. especially in places like Syria and Yemen, where mm. Subhanallah the, the challenges are on an extreme level. Mm. Um, but there is a, there is a lesson with it. Um, I, my mother was uh, my young mother, mashallah. She was sixteen when she had me. Um, uh-huh. And at the time of my father's passing, she was 18, I was two years old, and I had a sister who was one. 
and um, he was he was unfortunately stabbed. He was he was he was he was killed oh, by a person that, uh, from what I know, he he considered a friend, uh, and that just yeah, it, it just started a, a new journey for for our family. Mm. Um, my mother, I just, I, I sometimes think about it and what she had to go through. She was only 18 years old. Yeah. Couldn't speak the language. Had, you know, had, we didn't have any family here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she she tells me stories about how she had people that actually tried to steal our wealth. There was one incident where somebody took her to um, the solicitor and tried to sign, tried to get her to sign all over mm. my father's. Well, my father was quite well off. He had his own business. Uh, but something in my mother's mind told her not to sign off. And she didn't. She couldn't read and understand. She couldn't what was read and understand, but something in her mind. She says yeah. me something in her mind told her not to sign that document, and mm. she didn't. And and that's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protecting the wealth of the orphan. Yeah. And, um, and so growing up, it was it was challenging not having a, a father. Uh, um, you you know I, I I, as a father now I I, I I'm. I'm I'm the focus of my kids, you know, in terms of like mm. in trying to inspire them, trying to give them that positive message, this can do attitude, inculcate them those values. Yeah. Didn't have that. Um, had people in my family that saw me and my sister as a burden. Mm. We were told that a few times. Um, we were, you know, um, growing up, I, I I was told by 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 quite a few people that I wasn't going to amount to anything. Three people, in fact, told me this mm. growing up. And I believe that if, as a father, you know, if you have a father, the, the father figure is the person that basically protects you from that sort of negativity, yeah. you know, inculcates that positive mindset in an ideal world. Mm. Uh, and, and so I remember those three people. I never, I'll never forget those three people, the ones that said to me that, and this was later on in life when yeah. I was in co- school and in college as well. Um, they, they said to me, look, you might as well quit, quit education because you're not, gonna, you're not going to amount to anything. Mm. Yeah. One of them said, you're going to be in a factory next year. Nothing wrong with working in a factory, by the way. It's halal, it is a alhamdulillah. Yeah. But that that drove me. It gave mm. me a burning passion to to prove them wrong. It's a wrong kind of motivation, but it was motivation. Yeah. Uh, and and so I I I used that to, to, to drive me. And I remember when I got my degree. Yeah, I went to those three individuals and I told, <laughs> I just told them, I said I got my degree. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, uh, and so it's 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 a different kind of motivation, but it it, it did motivate me. Mm. Um, so the, the challenges of going back to the challenges of being an orphan, seeing my seeing my mother struggle, mm. um, one of the bravest ladies I've ever seen, mashallah. Uh, but Allah Subhanahu got us through, uh, and and I and I always think that. By the grace of Allah, we've never, despite growing up as orphans, we never, we were never short of things, the, the things, the necessities of life, like food, mm. clothes, a home, a roof over our head, security. That was always there, alhamdulillah. There were things that, of course, my friends, you know, they would, they would get computers, they would get bikes, I, ne- I, I would never have them. Mm. I'd always be sort of, you know, <laughs> looking at creative solutions to try and get what they had. <laughs> Uh, uh, and I was quite resourceful as a kid, um, and so, but I, you know, so there were those challenges. But when, I, when you know, I, as as I was growing up, I kind of it made me realize that with us being orphans, you know, despite despite the, the challenge of growing up as an orphan and not mm-hmm. having father, you know, we saw the difficulties of 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 of, of growing up as orphans. What would it be like for children? In, in, in the developing world mm. where sometimes you know you have children that have no mother or father that are left mm. on the streets to, to roam the streets that are starving because they have nobody to take care of them mm. and that that was always a thought that I had in my mind growing up and it it really has given me values that, that live with me till today mm. that inspire me to help people that are that are vulnerable that are in pain and that are in need, and mm-hmm. and so that I thank Allah for that for that lesson that He gave mm-hmm. us through those difficulties and challenges. Um, but yeah, I, I always say Alhamdulillah, mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. I, I I worry more for my for my mother who went through the difficulty of seeing yeah. this man that she loved and she truly loved him, um, you know, pass away so suddenly. 
Yeah. People were saying, uh, this is another thing, people were saying that what's going to happen to these two kids? Mm. What, what's going to happen to them now? Well, alhamdulillah, Allah took care of us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's amazing. I was going to say as well, I mean, you mentioned a few times that you were, you were a naughty kid and a lot of people wrote you off. Uh, you've mentioned that. <clears throat> um, but, you know, what was that like? Because there must have been a stage in your life later on where you came closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you found the deen and, 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 you know, that must have been a turning point for you. Yeah. So what was it, you know, what were those early years like for you where you were known as a rebel or a, a naughty kid? Uh, and then what led to that transition? I think that's what many people can relate to because everyone's on their own different journeys, of course. Um, even people who are listening and watching right now, everyone's on their own different journeys where, you know, they, they may have experienced something similar where either their, their elders, their teachers have said to them, listen, you just forget it. Like, you know, there, there's no hope for you. Um, you're too far away from Allah. But then something happens in life where they just they, they just come back to Allah. What was What was it for you? Deen changed my life. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Because of Islam, I, I you know, I, I, I am the man I am today. I have, uh, I, I live a life which has purpose. I, I have sakina, I have peace mm. of mind. And, um, I, and I've just been blessed, left, right and centre. It was because of mm. my, because of our religion of Islam. Just before I came on to the deen, I, I was I was I was a naughty boy. It was a rebellious youth growing up, um, you know. Sort of mother couldn't control me. I was out on the streets. I hurt her so much. Subhanallah. Mm. Sometimes coming home with bruises on my face because of fighting and stuff. Um, you know, giving a sleepless nights, not coming home at night. Um, you know, getting into trouble regularly. Uh, uh, and. I, I I remember getting expelled from school, suspended from school. I remember sort of quitting college once, um, obviously getting kicked out of university. My life was going over just before I came on, just before that, that journey towards Dean started. I was at my lowest ebb. Mm. I, I'd, um, I, I'd, I'd split from my friends and that was, that was actually part of the journey towards Dean. Mm. And that's an interesting story in that, that in itself. Uh, I was, I was in, back in Swindon, depressed my family were in pakistan which added to the mm -hmm. depression yeah i was i was i was an insomniac i couldn't sleep i remember sort of you know tossing and turning and um we wake you know sort of banging the walls because i couldn't sleep i was mentally not in a very good place I was depressed yeah was looking for honor dignity could never find it you know gave me this paranoid state of mind um negative mindset where you know i just kind of like didn't feel I could do anything or achieve anything. Mm. I felt like a failure. Uh, and then and then that's where Dean came and changed my life. And it all started in Pakistan, actually. Okay. Um, I went to Pakistan not to get married. It was for my sister's wedding. It was where I saw my wife and <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. What immediately sort of stood out for me with my wife was how pious she was. Mm. She was very pious, mashallah. You know, she would be fasting and, you know, all the time and, you know, praying to Hajjid. And even though I wasn't the dean, I recognized that, that as, a, as a very positive thing. Mm. And she was just, you know, just pure person, just very, uh, just, a, just a lovely person. So I, I, without, without sort of, you know, having any intention, I got, I got engaged to her. And this is me, like in that, in that rebellious state, this is a person that's going nowhere in life, potentially getting married to someone as pure as her. And, um, but she made dua for me, unbeknown to me. And the day that I came back from that Pakistan trip, I remember it was uh, it was before Ramadan. It was um, it, it was one of these nights where the, the the community in Pakistan were like you know out at night. Mm. I think Shab -e Barat they call okay, it. Yeah. Um, obviously, now there's a difference of opinion of about Shab -e Barat. Yeah. Um, I, I'm neither here nor there, but you know that <laughs> yeah. night, that night I was I made dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and because I had enough, I was depressed. I was like, I felt like I was going nowhere. <clears throat> and so I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, um, to show me the straight path. Mm. Genuinely from the heart. I remember where I was in an alleyway. I wasn't even in a mosque. I was in an alleyway. <laughs> I was in an alleyway with some, some local friends. Yeah. And I just made dua to Allah. And I begged to Allah. I said, Ya Allah, please show mm. me the straight path. Yeah, and that day when, when I came back 
from Pakistan. I went. Um, so at th- at that time, I was I was I wasn't at university, but I was still staying in the um, with friends who were in London, yeah. who were studying. But I was kind of just milling around, chilling mm-hmm. with them, having a laugh. I went back to to the house, and that night we got into a fight. And these were friends who, at that time, I considered my best friends. Some of these guys I grew up with from from school age, from infants, and got into a fight, a punch up, and. I left. I left that that house and I came back to Swindon. I felt my my world had finished because they were everything for me. Mm. They were. I I I I kind of gave them more respect and love than I did my own family. Mm. Uh, and and it was. It, I remember I was, I was in Swindon and I was I was just. It was Ramadan as well actually. Mm. It was it was Ram, Ramadan. Not, it wasn't Ramadan. Ramadan started later. Sorry. I came back, and then. Um, I was in this state where I, no family went there, so I was just at home, just sort of like you know, time reflecting, thinking yeah. all the time. And then Ramadan had come, and you know, again, just not fasting and stuff for a lot, just basically, you know, mm. living in this very depressed mode. And then um, what happened was, um, so I, I, Allah took me out of that situation. Yeah. So now I'm in a situation on my own. And then um, what happened was that one day, me. My friend Sajid, um, it was a very good, dear friend of mine, he still is still today. Um, we were outside his house talking, and there was another brother called Obed who was part of the the local sort of tablik work, and he he was walking past. Now usually when he used to, when anyone from the tablik work used to walk past, we used to run, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. We used to we used to kind of like you know yeah try and like hide our eyes and like, look yeah, away yeah. and stuff. And he came and he goes he goes lads, what are you doing? And uh, we just said, look, we were me and both me and Saj were talking about something quite depressing that happened the night before, actually. And and we just looked at each other and said, you know what? Let's go, let's go in Jamaat. It was a Friday evening. I I used to work in um, in, a, in a restaurant then, mm. and I I called up the restaurant. Sorry, Ali. I called him up and I basically quit I quit my job. <laughs> and I said, I'm going in Jamaat. He said, No, no, you got to come. I said, I, I quit. And I and I went and 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 then um, we called another friend. Yeah. Um, Ansar. And he joined us as well in Jamaat. And I remember we were in the mosque. We went to the mosque. And I will never forget this. And this is a very valuable lesson. Never lose hope in young people. Mm. So we were in the mosque ready to basically go on this Jamaat. We were planning to go to Gloucester, which is around the corner. And one of the elders, I'm not going to say his name. Or I'm not going to say his position within the, within the, the local Tablik movement. And he doesn't, you know, what, what I'm saying. Tablik movement, I, I, I mean, I, I love the work of Tablik. Mm. Alhamdulillah. I think it's a beautiful... Um, you know, pathway into Dean, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm mm. an evidence of that. But this man, he, he turned around. He's one of the elders, and he said, he pointed at me. We're all sat there. Quite, it was about 50, 10, 10 of us. He pointed at me. He goes, I am not taking him on Jamaat with me, because I, I had his naughty reputation. But everyone else was okay. Everyone else was okay. Yeah. I'm not taking him on Jamaat with me. Mm. And that was like, you know, it was disappointing because you're an elder. Mm. You're you're one of the seniors within within the local movement. Mm. Uh, one of the objectives is to is to is to help people to mm. to come onto the dean, and you're giving up on me. Mm. And uh, I obviously, I mean, uh, my mindset was such in those days that I I just started arguing back. I got up and goes, "Who do you think you are?" Blah blah blah. He ran out. I ran out after him. He ran to his car. I started banging on his window, <laughs> saying, "I'm going, I'm going. You can't stop me. You can't stop me." And yeah. I ended up going Jamaat. I yeah, still went, yeah. and I went in Jamaat with with <clears throat> some one wonderful people. Yeah. Um, local brother called Walid. Um, there was a doctor from Libya, and he was, oh, he was inspirational. He was just like he was just so nice and had this beautiful smile all the time. Mm. And we were just we just went on this journey in that, over those two days. And I remember, um, I remember the uh, on the, the Saturday evening, mm. me, Sajid, and Ansar were in the garden of the mosque having a cigarette. And as you do, <laughs> uh, by the way, I've quit cigarettes. Uh, and uh, and we, we said, look, we, we had enough of that life. And we, the reason we came here, we didn't discuss it, but we, mm. we wanted to change our lives. Yeah. And, and so we made a pact in that garden. We said that we cannot do this without each other. Because the temptation, going back, the t- there's always temptation. Yeah. Because we were still in that, you know, even those other friends were not there, but the other friends were still there. And, mm. you know, there was that temptation to sort of, you know, do the things that we, we used to do. We said we can't do this about each other, and let, let's make a pact. That night, I was in the um, the, the main prayer hall of Masjid Nur, mm. and I, I I begged Allah and, and I said Allah, Ya Allah, show me the show me the path, show me. The, I begged Allah for hidayah, I begged him, 
And I was on my own in that room. And wallahi, I got so scared because I felt something was there. And I felt this feeling of elation yeah. that I've only felt three times since then. I was like, it was like, almost like, I felt like it was like, out, almost like an out of body experience where this feeling of sensation, tingly sort of feeling across my body. And it was just amazing. I felt like I, I, I was in the presence. Mm. That somebody was in my presence. To such an extent, I actually got scared. Mm. And that, 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 when I came back from that Jamaat, my life had changed. Mm. I quit everything that I, that I used to do. All, all the haram stuff I used to do. I started to pray. Yeah. Um, and, and I never looked back since then. Um, what, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is so merciful. And he, he, he gives you these like, mess, you know, like symbols of encouragement. Mm. And when I came back, we had, we had lived um, on, on, our, on Manchester Road when we were living in Swindon. We lived next door to some skinheads. And for about two, three years, they terrorized us. They were terror, you know, they were like, you know, music four o'clock in the morning and, you know, banging the door, banging on our doors and like, you know, just constantly just nuisance. Mm. And I remember we, no, none of the family could sleep. We were living in fear. I remember going home uh, in, in, in the state of, you know, sort of being high on drugs. And I was just like, it was just like a, a nightmare to go home because you were thinking, oh, no, we have to go back to this. And it felt like it was never going to end. Mm. And that was one of my biggest worries at that time, living next door to these neighbors. And I remember we, we drove back. And when I, when I got to my house, this is from that Jamaat, that Sunday evening, we drove back. I got dropped off to my house and I looked next door. They'd moved. <laughs> they moved out. They moved out. And I felt like they were going to be there forever. Yeah. Because they'd been there for two, three years. And you and were only gone, what, like just two days, literally? Like two, two, two days. days. And, yeah. and it was like, it was almost like, it was like, <clears throat> almost like a symbol that subhanAllah, you know what? Yeah. This is like one of the sweetnesses of Iman, right? You know, everything <laughs> goes to, yeah. everything goes to plan. And that was beautiful. That, that, mm. that, that kind of almost like helped to, 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 to you know make my faith firm yeah and 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 I, i've had so many lessons since then as well you know every time you sort of feel like you're going sort of dropping mm. i the, the the sweetness of iman in that summer because mm. it was it was just on the we'd just gone into the summer holidays and the sweetness of iman at that time wallahi was like i I'd, I'd never experienced no it was akin to you know when you're uh when you're a young Mm. Young person waking up, you know, when you're infants, junior school, yeah. summer holidays, you're waking up and you've got the whole day. It's a sunny day and you've got like yeah. that, that that sort of feeling of, I'm just going to have fun, right? Yeah. And like, you know, the, with all this, like, you know, no burden or anything. I felt like that. I felt like there was no burden on my shoulders. And I had this burden on my shoulders, this mm -hmm. depression, this stress for, for, for what I felt like was forever. But mm. that, that, when I first came on the Dean, that's what I felt. I felt like almost like born again. Yeah. And 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 it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I, I, I ever since then, I've just like I, my biggest fear. This is my biggest fear, is, is is to kind of you know have this gift taken away from me, mm. the gift of your man. That's my biggest fear. And alhamdulillah, uh, that oh, changed yeah. my life. So it's an amazing, amazing journey, though. You know, uh, everyone, like I said, you know, before everyone has their own journeys. Your one is is unique. To you and, and everyone else experiences uh, their own journeys in different ways. Uh, I think there's some really important lessons we can take from what you've just mentioned. For example, you, you mentioned one which was not giving up on youngsters, for example. Very easy to do today. Yeah. You see the state they're in and you just think, you know. No hope. Yeah, exactly. No yeah, hope. I, I, I was told that regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of like, what kind of effect does it have? Because we don't realize it as, as someone older. We just think, yeah, it's fine, you know, whatever. But that must have a really like negative effect on on you hearing that as someone who's young, right? It it, it depends on the character of the person. So for yeah. me, it's to fire me up. Okay. It used to burn. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it would it would. You want to prove them wrong, and, and I wanted to prove yeah. them wrong. I wanted to kind of you know fight back. <clears throat> but not everyone's like that. Right. Not everyone's like that. And some yeah. people, you you see, some people it actually, uh, you know, puts them into into despair. Mm. Uh, you know, makes them feel hopeless. Yeah. Um. Uh, and and so we as as elders we. We have to instill this positive mindset into our mm. next generation. We have to we have to make them believe in themselves. Yeah. Um, because if we don't, then then really, to be honest, yeah, you know, there there there, there will be no hope. Mm. Uh, and it's it's our duty to ensure that we we create an environment that is safe around them, and and yeah. that and that helps to unleash their potential. Mm. And what we say matters. How we say it matters. And any young person that's, you know, they're vulnerable. They're, you know, they, they, they need advice and guidance. And it's our yeah. duty to do that. 
but instead if we if we turn around and 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 bully them and you know just you know give them this negative vibe then um, that's almost criminal for me yeah and we can't be doing that and and so um it, it's one of my I, I i mentor a number of young people i speak to a number of young people regularly mm. and one the, the one the one thing that i, I work on most is positive mindset mm. is inculcating this positive mindset my daughters alhamdulillah you know i've always inculcated this mindset of, of positivity my eldest daughter is severely partially sighted she's born with a condition called the lawrence moon body beetle syndrome when she was born they said that she was that she was going to be that she was going to be brain damaged that she's going to be dialysis for the rest of her life that she's going to be academically slow mm. um and then we found out she was severely partially sighted and but i always instilled into her I said don't you know don't let anything be an excuse work harder mm. gave her examples of other inspirational people like you know a, like a, a story of this lady that was a refugee completely 100% blind and she went on to become a professor for the un wow through determination mm. to succeed and my daughter I've always told her <clears> that and and alhamdulillah only you know a few weeks ago the proudest moment of my life when my my daughter you know despite the, the challenges that she's had in her life she's always fought hard to overcome them she she you know she she qualified with her just you know what what a star star six a stars three a's b and a c <laughs> and it was just like you know she's at one of the best six forms now in in, in the country alhamdulillah Mashallah. and 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 that's because she i've tried to inculcate this positive mindset that mm. no matter what challenge she has gone through a lot of challenges in her life yeah in and out of hospital regularly but she's never let it be an excuse mm. you know even in ramadan she had she had when she was revi- revising she had a, a, a difficult episode an exam next morning couldn't sleep still went in and aced the exam mashallah got i think she Amazing. got a nine in that exam if I'm not mistaken mashallah. so uh, you know she this is this is the one gift i think that we can we can impart on our children yeah yeah that positive mindset that you know it, that determination mm. to succeed um we through that through that sort of you know channeling that positivity i think we can make a massive impact on this positive yeah. impact on this world definitely inshallah inshallah another thing i mean because you've mentioned you mentioned that you did init- you did eventually go to university and 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 you finished right you graduated <laughs> yes uh, but <laughs> but that wasn't it wasn't as straightforward as people probably think where you went there and you just you managed to graduate right uh, so at what point at what point are we now in the in your journey right. and and what would have happened at university so i i i i'd come back and think it was a summer yeah and and <clears throat> didn't have a job didn't so I, yeah. I, i got a job i think um i got a um after i came with actually i got a pretty good job actually it was a, mm. a job working for a company it's a tech company yeah and i don't know how I, i managed to get myself a job there and no qualifications but alhamdulillah mm. this is a risk from allah but as i was doing the job i felt like i felt like i need to do more mm. so I, i i went back to my university and tried to persuade them to allow me back in and when you look at you know the my track record up until that point really to be honest it was <laughs> it was yeah it was it was looking so very what challenging was it before that you you failed you you left yourself what was uh, it i i just didn't turn up to exam yeah, yeah. I, i think I, i did a few I, i can't remember i think there were some exams i missed or yeah. i never attended and mm. um i think i may have done a few exams where i got good marks mm. but overall my, my track record wasn't good uh, i went back and uh, and i spoke to uh, the admissions tutor and she looked at me and she said look the only and i just basically i mean i just tried every you know i was just trying my best to persuade her to let me back in you know showing that i was determined to yeah. to succeed she saw something in me because she goes okay fine i'll let you in if you do this module called beck 3020 it was an economics module completely you know nothing to do with the module that i was doing the the, the degree that i was doing but it had the highest fail rate mm-hmm. in the university and and so i i um she said the only way you can get back in is if you do this module I said fine I'll do it. Alhamdulillah I did it and I got I got a distinction in it. Mashallah. And then I went yeah. back in, worked hard, got my degree, alhamdulillah. And and yeah, just from there by the grace of Allah it's just I've just been blessed in my life. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Got a job um at the Learning Skills Council. Got a job in a German company, actually learned a lot there about processes and stuff and then yep. Just um yeah, I have have not looked back since alhamdulillah. Yeah. So again, I think it's it's similar to obviously when you fast forward to your journey in the charity sector how you were rejected 
uh, initially and then you managed to it's like same with university basically where you were you had to leave university due to whatever reason it was but then you were determined enough to go back and and give it another shot yeah. and alhamdulillah it did work out for yeah. you so i think that's again it's it's those lessons of just not giving up because again students today it's very easy to to get a bad result and then think yeah. That's it. And, so and and then let that result define the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, oh, because I didn't get the degree, because I didn't get the the right grades, that means I'm a failure. That means I'm never going to get a good yeah. job. Um, but it just shows that you should keep keep trying and and keep going at it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I, I I you know um, degrees, but ac- academia is very important. But yeah. Th- there's something for me which is more, a lot more important than that, and that's 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 having that determination mm. to succeed. That's uh, having the ability to work hard. Mm. Constantly pushing yourself outside the comfort zone, you know. As I've as I've progressed in my career, mm. I, I've been in situations where I feel like an imposter. Mm. You know, I've I've had to do sort of, I've had to do speeches in in you know the houses of parliament. Uh, just this year, summer gone, I was I was um, hosting an event, but I had the likes of Jeremy Corbyn and other MPs there. And sometimes I just look at myself and think, I'm a little street boy from Swindon, and I'm here. <laughs> you almost you feel like an imposter. Yeah. And this is something which is actually well known, sort of within the leadership yeah, yeah. circles. People people talk about this often. Um, the important thing is to, is to not give up. The important mm. thing is because you can listen to that little voice in the head. It's quite and be quite easy to make excuses and base you know yeah. just not do anything or or not take on a certain challenge. Mm. Uh, uh, and and for me, the difference between people that really make an impact in life and those that don't are, are those that 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 are willing to work hard, that are willing to push themselves outside their comfort zone, mm. that are willing to sort of take on those difficult challenges, those challenges that, you know, that, that put fear of the fear of life in you, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's a very, for me, a very important lesson. I, I, I try and tell the next generation that you will encounter those difficult situations, yeah. but you've got to take them on. If, mm. it, if it's not bad for you, if it's not haram, if it's something that's not going to, you know, risk of killing you, then do it mm. and make sure you bloom and do it because it's going to be a good experience for you. Even if you don't do it very well, it will be an invaluable experience yeah, and yeah, it will yeah. give you confidence to, to, to continue that, that journey mm. of learning. Yeah. I mean, looking into the Quran, like um, one story that always stands out is like, you know how Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, he eventually, he landed one of the highest positions, which was being the minister of Egypt, superpower at the time. And, you know, literally, it's probably you have the king and then you have Yusuf literally, right? Uh, that's how high up he is but then it's amazing how again same you look back at his life and it wasn't like straightforward Allah just gave him this opportunity like he started off in the well his own family shunned him separated from his father for for a long period of time many many years Um, and we could even say growing up as an orphan because he didn't have a father and he probably thought he'd lost his father for 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 life right Uh, and then you know going to prison and, and going through all these tests and trials but then Allah wanted him to, to to land that position. And the only way that he could have been who he was, was being strengthened Good and purified test, through yeah. that process. Well, so he wouldn't character. have been Yusuf. Yeah. Builds character. That's it. And That's and, it. and I, I always thank, I always look back and I thank Allah for the mm. challenges I've gone through in my life. Yeah, I've gone through some extreme <clears throat> challenges. Um, and I always say Alhamdulillah. Mm. Because I believe it's, it's, it's helped me to build that resilience. Yeah. That character. That, that mindset. Mm. That allows me to do the job that I am doing at the moment. Yeah, it gives me the passion to to wake up every morning, you know, and 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 you know, to the drive to 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 want to keep succeeding. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I always thank Allah for that. Alhamdulillah. I have an odd question, which is obviously we've heard your struggles mainly before you were practicing, right? Uh, growing up uh, as an orphan and then being written off, etc. You had a lot of struggles. It's an odd question, but do you feel like, you know, when you did finally become closer to Allah and you came closer to the deen, do you feel like you were tested even more than, than prior to coming closer to Allah? What would you say? Um, yeah, I've, 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 had, yeah, I've had tests. I've had tests. and um, But they're not, they, they, they weren't, how can I say? I think you're, you're, just, you're better equipped for those tests. Yeah, and yeah. you have this... You know, every test that I've been through since I came on the dean, mm. I have seen the positivity in that test. Okay. I've seen how it has helped me. So your mindset has changed completely. Your mindset has changed completely. Yeah, to, and, yeah. and, and and so, but I'm looking back and reflecting. Mm. Every test that I've been through has helped me. Yeah, 
and and also and some I have not seen the true benefits in this world, but I believe inshallah in the life after I will hopefully see the benefits. Mm, inshallah. 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 It's, the only reason why I'm asking is because again, the, you know, a lot of people might think that okay, now that uh, I'm 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 a practicing you know Muslim and everything's going to go well, everything's going to go no, okay. No, no, no. But actually, it's it's pretty much the opposite, yeah. which is that Allah's going to test you more now to yeah. see are you steadfast? Is yeah. my servant firm or the, not? The, the the tests before Dean were difficult because you didn't have the mindset to, to yeah, handle yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And and you and during that time, you're always <clears> constantly <throat> having this. You got the shadow of you, and it's like yeah. it's like this burden upon your shoulders. And this sort of horrible feeling of negativity, depression. Mm, 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 mm. Um, and, and so, um, coming on the dean, yes, you do go through this challenge. You go through. I've gone through, you know, some very difficult challenges. Yeah. Um, but you have the dean helps you, alhamdulillah, mm. because you know that you can turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at the Hajj time. Yeah. And beg Him for help, mm. and you know that a solution will be provided. Either in this life, or if not, if if Allah doesn't choose it for this life, then at least in the life after, yeah. you'll have something inshallah if you show patience. So that 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 mindset is very important mm. to know that you've got Allah behind you. You know, yeah. Allah's got your back, so to speak. Of course, of course. I, w- I wanted to um, discuss something which is it's, it's probably a lot more personal and and something which happened a lot more recently in 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 in, in the years. Um, something which was shocking news for for many of us when we when we heard about it and and when we read about it. So I remember. The first time hearing of of this test that you went through uh, with your with your son, um, Omar may Allah subhanahu wa taala have mercy on him. I mean. um, you know, it was it was a huge shock, and this was a lot more recent, like we're saying, right? Um, two thousand and fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. So uh, very very recent still. Um, I just want you to because uh, the reason why I feel like this is important because there's so many people listening and watching that have lost people who are. Who are close to them, whether it's parents or siblings or even their own children. Um, you know, how did you even? I I can't even imagine what you would have went through. And again, coming back to, you know, did you feel like you were equipped for that? And 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 what what went through your mind? You know, when when you when you when you were tested in this way. You know, be, before before I lost Umar, before mm. we lost Umar. Um, my my biggest fear, mm. you know, it's, it's weird that you know your mind conjures up these scenarios. Yeah. My biggest fear, the thing that would basically just fill me with dread, would make my heart sink, was losing my kids in the haram. You mm. know, during the you know when it's all packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, that thought would always come to my mind. Like you know, mm. I, it's weird. I know that's that's. I I would think that you know praying salah and all of a sudden my 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 kids have disappeared. Yeah, yeah. And that used to like, I used to get palpitations thinking about that. Mm. Because for any parent, losing your kid is the biggest test. Mm. You don't expect to outlive your children. Mm. You know, you have, you have aspirations for them. You know, you want them to, you know, you wish nothing but success for them. You have hope mm. in them. You know, they, they just, they, you, you know, they're, you just have nothing but love for them. And, and they become the meaning of your life. Mm. So, Allah decided to test me with with the biggest test and mm. to take my son. He was, you know, my only son at the time. I had four beautiful daughters, and by the way, if Allah blessed me with ten other daughters, I'd, I'd still be content and happy because the love of a daughter is unrivaled. Alhamdulillah. Mm. But Allah blessed us with a son, the fifth child, and we were in Portugal. It was our first family holiday, actually. Wow. Um, because the work never allowed you to take family holidays, yeah, yeah. and um, and so yeah, um, I, I was sat in a room and then I heard this god awful scream and I still I, I get panic attacks now. If I hear screams, I get panic attacks. Mm. So you know, the other day my my wife screamed because I think she saw a rat or something, mm. and I I immediately got a panic attack. I get it because of that. Yeah, so I heard the scream, ran outside, and there was a pool and he was floating in the middle of the pool. And I'll never forget, I remember running up to the pool and, you know, screaming no, 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 and ran and jumped into the pool, dragged him out, pulled him out, and I just started CPR. Um, but I could tell he was gone. But I never gave up, I was still trying. And then um, we were in the middle of nowhere. Nobody mm-hmm. could hear us. We were literally in the middle of nowhere. And I was screaming and shouting, but nobody could hear. And I, obviously, I had to go and call an ambulance. And there was a hotel which was 
um, some distance away. And I didn't have the telephone number of the hotel or anything. So I just, I told my mum, I said, look, my mum was there, my daughters were there, my wife, everyone's witnessing this. And then uh, I just asked my mum to carry on CPR and I ran out, ran off to the hotel. And then we got the ambulance there, they came and they, we, we were trying CPR for, for the next, I think, hour. Mm. And then in this time, I immediately the thought that came to my mind was, Alhamdulillah, he's made it. I knew, I knew he was dead. But the thought that came in my mind was that he made it. That he's, alhamdulillah, he has, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to take him through this very challenging way. As a, you know, one of the, one of the, um, there are a number of deaths, which if, you know, if, if you die through those means, you yeah. are considered a shaheed. Yeah. One of them is drowning. Mm. When do we ever go near a pool? When do we ever sort of like, you know, are, when do we ever open to that risk of, you know, so sort of mm. one of our kids drowning because we just we're never in that situation. We live in yeah. concrete jungle there. But Allah decided to take us all the way to Portugal, and and decided to take him through this means. And immediately, I I, I felt, I felt that. Sort of you know the, the peace, mm. that that he had made it. But even though you felt that at the time, and it allowed me to handle it because if I didn't have, if I didn't have, if I didn't know, or if I didn't have you know, if I didn't have that sort of knowledge that he is now going to a better place. I would have gone mad. Mm -hmm. I literally would have lost my mind. But Dean helped me, alhamdulillah. Um, and it was just, uh, it just started this, you know, we were there in Portugal on our own. We had some, you know, we were inundated with messages, people telling us that they wanted to come over, help us, support us. I said, no, I wouldn't give my details to anybody. My, three of my family members came, they, they, re they were really helpful. And then three of my friends, <laughs> Imran, Isa, Adam, um, um, and the other brother, subhanAllah, names slipped my mind. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember, but they turned up. Mm. They wouldn't listen. They turned up and they were so helpful in, the, in that period. Yeah. Uh, but that, it was just, it was just difficult after that. You know, my wife was bordering on madness, running out into the streets, shouting up you know, into the garden, shouting Umar, his name Umar. It was just, uh, yeah, it was, it was a very, 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 very sad time, mm. um, but I had to be strong for my family because everyone around me was just broken, just fell to pieces. Yeah, so I had to be strong for them. But then, I, I, I went through extremely difficult moments. But every time I, I give you one example, you know, you, uh, like this, um, Allah would, you know, help me in that period, mm. in that moment. There's one particular time when you, we had guests coming around. Yeah. Um, and when we had people around, people around me, I was okay. You know, just for that moment, I was kind of like, you know, just slightly lost in the moment. But then uh, this one moment where I was on my own, lying down, and I, and I remember I, I was going through extremely difficult time in my mind, you know, because, and yeah, I was just, I was a broken man. I really was. Even though I had this satisfaction, I know he's made it, but I was still a broken man. Mm. And... And I remember, like, at that moment in time, it was like, I was at my lowest, one of my moments when I was at my lowest ebb. It was a number of those moments mm. in, that, in that journey at that time. And um, so what happened, I think, yeah, it was my, um, my phone rang. And it was uh, uh, one of my friends. And I, I really didn't have the heart to speak to him. So I put the phone on the side. And, and, I, and, I, and I know I did not press the, the answer button on that phone. Mm. Right? But somehow... The phone had answered, and he's saying hello, 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 and I and I felt too rude not to say anything. I picked up the phone and I started speaking to him. He gave me some words of consolation at the time, and I can't remember what exactly he said. But at that moment, and this guy's not known for like you know, being sort of a person that can give you inspiring mm. words or like words of consolation that will make you feel better. But he gave me a few words that immediately, immediately made me feel better. And there were a number of occasions where, where at my lowest ebb, Allah helped me somehow. Mm. It was once a dream where I saw him, you know, shining, alhamdulillah, on, on a bed. Uh, and, and these things help. But, but I, went, I, went through, um, I went through difficulty for, for, for a number of months, mm. I think. I, you know, at, I was at Orphan's Inn at that time. And the, the stress of it all just basically, I, I felt that I couldn't carry on. I, I'd lost my, I lost my passion in that role at that time. And I, and I, I spoke to Tracy and said, look, I, need, I have to leave. And I mm. decided to... And decided to resign from my post at the time because of the difficulties, and that's when Islamic Khalif came along. 
just I think a week after and said look they didn't know that I'd resigned by the way mm. but this is from Allah Rizik from Allah right and he just you know, he said look would you like to come work and I went, then they said can you apply for this role um, applied for the role got the job and even that that first year of Islamic Relief I went through this um, this, this mental problem where I was getting panic attacks mm. and I was getting them at a time where you know just before going and doing speeches mm. and it was like that's like one of the main parts of my job yeah and I you know I, I on a couple of occasions fainted at the pulp at, at the really yeah standing up and doing speeches because of these panic attacks yeah yeah and and they were you know obviously exacerbated by this by by this issue mm. and so I went through you know real mental problems but I, I had to fight through that yeah I had to I had to because that was the main part of my job I didn't tell anybody mm. I, w- I just fought through that and still sort of carried on tried to put a brave face on every time I sort of felt the, the, the panic attack coming on I'd I'd walk out the, I'd, a couple of occasions I walked out of the room I, the panic attack was such that I couldn't speak yeah I'd stop speaking and like I'd start sweating uh, and uh, and these were these were sort of some of the mental problems that I had as a result uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed everything with the blessing mm. of our son Isa and um, you know when when we when we lost him the, the sheikh said to me there was this I think the dua that the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to recite yeah. I don't I don't remember the Arabic but I know the English translation it was like inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un oh Allah please reward us for our affliction yeah. and replace us with something or <clears throat> someone better um, and I would do anything to have Umar back mm. I don't believe anything's better than him or anything like that it sounds a bit callous but Allah did bless us with a child that is amazing. Isa is amazing. He's beautiful. Mm. He's, he's, you know, he's one of those little boys that, you know, he does anything he does is just like, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, and that really helped us. Yeah. That really helped us. Um, just before then as well, we went, when we went Umrah, that really, that was also a, a wonderful moment where we could unload in yeah. front of Allah. But I believe that I, I didn't get over the, the issue really for about two years after. Mm. It was over. I mean, I, I think in like I, I've, it's only the last year that I've, I've year and a half that I felt like I've stopped having the panic attacks. Yeah, I don't have that anymore. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. conquered that. But that that I had to fight to overcome that because mm. my job was such that I had to be you know put in front of people. I was you know yeah. made to do speeches, but I couldn't stop my job. So yeah. I, every every time it was like it was like a battle in my mind, but I never gave up. Yeah, I never gave up, and I and I would fight through it. Found coping mechanisms. One mistake I did make, though, was I didn't get counselling. Mm. And that was one thing. It was one thing I would recommend anybody that goes through an extreme bereavement yeah. is to get counselling. I did it all my, in my own mind, yeah. sort of counselling my own self, if you like. Uh, and and I, I believe I could have overcome the issues a lot quicker had I got counselling. Mm. But it was it was challenging. But it was faith that got me through it. Yeah. With the thinking that he is in a better place, that he has made it, alhamdulillah. And then you know, after Isa was born, <clears throat> that made it easier. Yeah, there were there were moments where I would every day I'd be thinking about it. I, mm. Every moment I was thinking about it. I was thinking about me pulling him out. There's a particular vision that I have. Yeah, I was jumping in the pool, pulling him out. That vision, what he was wearing, how he was bent over in the pool, how he was like floating in the pool, that would never leave me. But I was punishing myself by remembering all the time. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, since Isa was born, it became a lot better. Don't think about it as much as I used to. Yeah. Like in the last, in the last month, I think I've only thought about it twice. Mm. And every time I think about it, my heart sinks, you know. But, but I, I thank Allah that you know, I thank Allah for that. I thank yeah. Allah because, Alhamdulillah for Him, He's made it. Yeah, He's yeah. in Inshallah, in the garden with Ibrahim al Islam playing around. Inshallah. You know, this is what the ultimate purpose is, right? It's mm. about the life after. And for myself and for my wife and for my family, I'm hopeful that hopefully we will get some um, benefit out of it in the life after. It's That's one right. of those where I said to you, you know, earlier I said that, you know, these tests, sometimes you see benefits in, the li- in this yeah, life, yeah, yeah. but sometimes you'll see in the, for this one, I, I, I'm hoping that inshallah I will see the benefit in the life after. Inshallah. It's an amazing dua as well that you were you, that you, that you read, you know, which is Allah replace, replace this with something better. Yeah. Um, and you know, like I've heard so many stories about people who went through something similar, and and they made this dua, and Allah did, Allah did answer that dua. <clears throat> and 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 this is actually what happened with um, 
Umm Salama radiallahu anha, when, when she lost her husband and her husband was known to be you know, the ideal husband and she loved him so much, but he was, he was uh, martyred and, and she, she vowed to basically never get married again. I'm never going to find a husband like uh, Abu Salama. And then she was taught to make the same dua. Oh Allah, replace this, this test with something better. And what a replacement. And she married the Prophet <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. No, no, it's um, yeah, um, it it is, it's particularly challenging. It was particularly mm. challenging for my wife, of course. Yeah. She was his everything. Yeah. You know, she spent the most time with him. Mm. She's the one who you know. So we went back. I can remember we came back to London. We came back too soon. Mm. We came back like after about two weeks, I think, or whatever it was. Didn't yeah. have a break properly. And we came back, and just the memories <clears throat> of, you know, going around the, in that, coming into the house and seeing yeah. everything just reminded us of him. Mm. I got rid of most things. I got rid of his belongings. I got rid of, you know, pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. In fact, what one, you know, again, it's from Allah. I lost my phone in Portugal. Mm. I had all my images of him on that phone. Wow. I lost it. Mm. But it helped. It helped. Mm. So it's um yeah it's uh, it's something that we will always we will live with until we until yeah. we leave this world it's not it's not going to go away mm. but you know consolation that alhamdulillah he's alhamdulillah he's doing all right inshallah 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 so I mean you know we've been through so, so many different parts of of your journey from growing up um, as an orphan to you know losing subhanallah your your own child um, and again you know how we began this 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 podcast which was that. You know, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed you, and and you look back and and, and you know Always you look back and and you have a, uh, this position now where you're you're in a position where you can help you know, mashallah, so many people. Um, but there were struggles and and there were tests and trials and there were some really difficult moments. But I don't think you would have been who you are today without going through all of that. You know, um, I I want you to inshallah, since we're coming to the end, is to give some final piece of advice. I think in particular for the younger generation who are listening, who are also going through their own sets of trials and tribulations, uh, who are on the verge of giving up. Um, and, I, and I really believe that they can relate to someone like yourself. What would your final pieces of advice be for them? I, I think m mindset is, is the most important thing. Mm. And they must think positive. Um, first of all, find the why. <clears throat> yeah. The why is important. You know what is our purpose, and and find find that thing that that inspires you. So I'm talking about sort of from a career perspective. Yeah. Find find that thing that 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 motivates you, that inspires you, that gives you excitement in your stomach. Mm. Um, I found it in charity work. Find your why, and then to help you find your why, actually, speak to people that that are experienced. People that you see that have, alhamdulillah, succeed in life because success is relative, right? Yeah. You know? Speak to them. Ideally, get a mentor. Mm. Like, what we've not covered in, in, in today's podcast is, is how a mentor helped me. Mm. And I have a number of mentors. And I've always had a mentor since 2006, um, seven. Okay. People that have, you know, older, I mean, people that are experienced, mm. that have helped me and shaped my, my career journey, that have advised me along the way. Invaluable support. Mm. Find a mentor. Find somebody that you can seek advice from. Find your why. Once you found your why, have a goal. Have a goal about what it is you want to become. Mm. I think that, uh, and and it's it, it's got to be connected to the why. It's got to be that thing that that motivates you, yeah. that inspires you. Then very simply, make dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That he, that he allows you to achieve, that goal. Mm. And more. And then work your hardest. So going back to the dua. The, the, the moment of tahajjud is a gift. And it has never failed me. Whenever I've gone through challenges in my life, coming on to the deen, I came on because I feel like I made dua at that, at that moment. Mm. Um, and... Use tahajjud. Use the, you know, if you want something bad enough, if you haven't prayed tahajjud, I don't believe you want it bad enough, yeah. in my opinion. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that moment. Pray at any moment, but particularly at that moment. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep asking Him for help. And then work your socks off. Work hard. Push yourself, 
yourself outside of your comfort zone mm -hmm. to try and achieve that. Never give up. You know, you're going to go through challenges along the way. Just as I've said that we, I, I did in my yeah. life. But, but look at them as, as, as opportunities to learn mm -hmm. and, and, to, and to gain wisdom and to learn maybe how to change your, 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 your tactic mm -hmm. and keep trying until you get that goal. The, the one thing that I, I've seen you know, people that, that, have, that have, you know, achieved positions where they're able, and for me, if, the why for me is, there's two things important here, is, is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to try and effect positive change in this world. If you, can, if you can have your why connected to those two things, brilliant. Hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, but there's nothing wrong with doing businesses and, and, and earning money. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but <clears throat> have the intention of, you know, earning money to, so that you can give more zakat and sadaqah to help people in need. Mm -hmm. um, but, 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 you know, have that determination to succeed in China. The, the difference I've seen, I've seen people that are, the people that I've seen that have gained success the one thing that I've seen consistent in a consistent trait and value in all of them is um, is selflessness. A person that you know wants to you know really help others, mm. not just about themselves. You know they're the people that have contentment. I've seen, and and those that are constantly you know willing to push themselves outside that comfort zone. Mm. Those that are willing to take on challenges, are willing to take on challenges. Are willing to sort of like you know go to the unknown mm. uh, to areas which you know they they don't know if it's going to be a failure or not yeah uh, and and they they push through that with determination use it as a learning experience and 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 become wiser and 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 you know obviously uh more developed mm. in, in 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 that chosen career path or or in life yeah so for me it's 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 those those simple words of advice that I would give to anybody but determination, resilience, never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves all of us more than our own mothers. Mm. Think about that. He loves us more than our own mothers. And do you think that if we if we if we turned to him and begged him for help and support that he wouldn't help us? Mm. I've always turned to him and he's always answered. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, to fail is, uh, I personally have found it very, very inspiring, um, your story and, and your journey. <clears throat> and I'm sure the, the many viewers and listeners that will be tuning in, they can also relate to your story. And, and some really important lessons um, for, for all of you, which is, you know, uh, it's countless lessons, not giving up on, 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 on youngsters and, you know, being determined, resolute, how to, you know, deal with difficulties, hardships, bereavements, etc. There's a lot that we can take. Um, and I wish we had more time, but Jazakallah Khairan, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> once failed for, for having you on. May Allah SWT bless you in your work uh, and, and may he take you even further, inshallah. Um, and, and may Allah SWT accept it from all of us. Jazakallah Khair, Ameen. once again, thank you so much. Thank it's you. An absolute brother. pleasure. Uh, and I hope you all uh, enjoyed and benefited from this uh, podcast episode. Uh, don't forget, of course, uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know maybe in the comments below some of the challenges that you've faced in your lives and how you've been able to overcome those challenges you never know someone reading might be inspired and they might be able to take that step as well uh may Allah bless you all thank you so much once again for tuning in and we will see you very very soon from myself shabir on the on feed podcast take care assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh